this summit is so encouraging in that it is helping Asian Pacific Islander women become leaders. Now, there was a time when women were routinely invisible and marginalized in this country, so much so that the U.S. Senate didn't even have a woman's restroom. They never expected a woman to cross that pathway. But today, all of that is changing. More amazing was the next day when President Obama called me from the White House to congratulate me on becoming the first Chinese-American woman elected to Congress in history. How API women can be supportive of one another and each other as we work through this process of being heard um, in public service. And so I thought this would be a great way for us to get together. And the impetus of this gathering is really based around community. Are created equal. That we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We know this generation of women must protect for our daughters what our mothers and grandmothers want for us. We might be the first all-women-led government in the nation, but we won't be the last. Thank you, Sijus Masi, for having Salamak Paul Apex and run the road with the Apex Women's Collective. centuries of activism and revolution and protest, um, both abroad and here in the U.S. Um, the first racial registry that was um, enacted by Congress was a registry of Chinese and Chinese Americans in 1892. And it was in Chinatown that Chinese American leaders resisted and told everyone not to register, um, to, to resist this act by Congress. And, and actually thousands of litigations were launched by Asian Americans in the late 1800s after these um, racist laws were enacted. And so I think it's incredibly important for us to be connected to that history. Our, our, who we are is not to be quiet and passive, what we're told. We have a history of activism, of, of protests, of public service, and we need to continue that because people fought for us to be here, and we need to continue to fight so others can come in through the door with us. I'm angry, you know, it doesn't qualify as an effective leader. So I would just say really trust your gut as well, and, and the most important thing is just to be true to yourself. And as long as, you know, you have earned the right to be in those seats because the public and all the constituent, all the people you knocked on doors are the people put their trust in you to represent the community and don't feel like all of a sudden you have to adopt you know, a whole new, you need to learn the, the kind of tools and the technical stuff, but you're still you and you're still uh, there because you might be demonstrating a totally new type of leadership. It's simple, so there are different perspectives at the table because our perspectives matter. So, You know, uh, in Idaho, our state capitol is built in a way that the architect uh, had built it so that it shines a lot of light into our rooms that we vote in. He wanted to be able to lift us back past uh, self-interest so that we vote uh, for the public good. And I've been around long enough that I see we need a little more light. Either that, or we need to get uh, AAPI women in to office. Uh, because what I find most times is that we're kind of dialed in on what's good for the community. We need to be at the table because there's so many decisions, policy decisions that get voted in that are harmful or practices in our you know, I'm speaking on the school committee level too, just because, you know, we can have impact on um, representing the underrepresented, um, those struggles that, that people have around food security. It also impacts children in the schools and accessing, you know, food, accessing nutrition. We need to be at the table. Um, it's, it's very critical. You know, you can advocate for a lot of things. You can make really, um, impactful um, changes and, 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 and our values need to be represented at the table. Um, 
that's why we need to run. So you I should take, take, take heart in the fact that in your own community, people are trying to build up each other and build together. And it's kind of like that mentality of like, how do you, if you're crabs in a barrel, how do you get out? And it's like, you gotta all kind of climb together. Um, because no one crab can climb out by themselves. And so you're, there's a lot of that that happens, at least in this town. Um, and, and that is something that I, I've actually enjoyed a great deal. I think that's so true. And Madeline, that's how you and I met. And then what does she do? She like brings me to come speak to her conference. Yes. <laughs> we, you're, you're modeling it. That it was that decision eight years ago that became the turning point in my journey towards self-confidence and fearlessness in a home our children will thrive in. Thank you so much.